Hi guys, I'm back. Today I'm going to read Ezekiel 44 to 48, Proverbs 4 and Psalm 96. Let's get started. Then the men brought me back to the outer great gate of the temple. It was the one that faced east. It was shut. The Lord said to me, This gate must remain shut. It must not be opened. No one can enter through it. It must remain shut because I have entered through it. And I am the God of Israel. The prince is the one who can sit in the gateway. Then he, there he can be in front of me. So he must enter through the porch of the gateway. And he must go out the same way. Then the man brought me through the north gate. He took me to the front of the temple. I looked up and saw the glory of the Lord. He filled his temple. I fell with my face toward the good. The Lord said to me, Son of man, pay attention. Look carefully. Listen to closely to everything I tell you. I'm telling you about all the rules and instructions concerning my temple. Pay attention to the entrance of the temple and to all its exits. Cling to the people of Israel. They refuse to obey me. Tell them, Here's what the Lord and King says to the people of Israel. I have had enough of your evil practices. I hate them. You brought outsiders into my temple. They were not circumcised. Their hearts were stubborn. You made my temple unclean, but you offered me food, fat, and blood anyway. And when you did all these things, you broke the covenant I made with you. I hated all the evil things you did. You did not do what I told you to. You did not take care of my holy things. Instead, you put other people in charge of my temple. The Lord and King says, There are outsider whose heart is stubborn can enter my temple. They have not been circumcised. Even if they live among the people of Israel, they can't enter my temple. Some Levites wandered far away from me when Israel went astray. They worship the statues of the gods, so they will be punished because they have sinned. They might serve in my temple. They might be in charge of its gates. They might kill the burnt offerings and sacrifices for the people. And they might stand in front of the people and serve them in other ways. But these Levites served the people of Israel. They served while the Israelites were worshipping the statues of their gods. They made the people fall into sin. So I raised my hand and made a promise. I warned them that I would punish them because of the sin. I announced this to the Lord and King. They must not approach me to serve me as priests. They must not come near any of my holy things. They must stay away from my very holy offerings. They did many things they should have been ashamed of. I hated those things, but I will still appoint them to guard the temple. They will guard it for all the work that, they, that has to be done there. Now the priests must approach the need to serve me. They are Levites from Zadok's family line. They guarded my temple all when the people of Israel turned away from me. These priests must serve me by offering sacrifices of fat and blood. And I says, Lord and King, they are the only ones who can enter my temple. Only they can come near to serve me as gods. They will enter the gates of the inner courtyard. When they do, they must wear linen clothes. They will serve at the gates of the inner courtyard or inside the temple. When they do, they must not wear any clothes made out of wool. They must have linen turbans on their heads. They must wear linen underwear around their waists. They must not wear anything that makes them sweat. They will not. They will go into the outer courtyard. Um, where the people are, and they do. They must take off the clothes they have been serving in. They must leave them in the sacred rooms, and they must put other clothes on. And the people will not be made holy if they happen to touch the priest's clothes. The people, the priests, must not shave their heads. They must let their, they must not let their hair grow long. They must keep it short. No one priest may drink. Wine when he enters the court in a courtyard. They must not get married to widows or or divorced. They must only marry if married virgins or the widows of priests. The priests must teach for my people the difference between what is holy and what is <coughs> and what is not. They must show them how to tell the difference between what is clean and what is not. When people do not agree, they, the priests must serve as judges between them. They must make their decisions based on my laws. They must obey my laws and rules for my appointed feasts, and they must keep my days holy. 
The priest must not make himself unclean by go near a dead person. And I suppose the dead person was his father or mother. Well, suppose it was his sister or daughter or brother or a married sister. Then the priest must make, may make himself unclean. After he is pure and clean again, he must wait seven days. Then you may go to the inner courtyard to serve in the temple. When he does, he will sacrifice a sin offering to himself and then sit to the Lord and King. The priest will not receive any part of the land of Israel, and I myself will be the only shepherd. They will eat the grain offerings, sin offerings, and guilt offerings. Everything in Israel that is set apart to me in a special way. And they will belong to me. The best of every first share of the people's crops will grow along to the priest. So will all their special gifts. So the people must give the priest their first the share of their grain meal. And then I will bless many people's families. The priest must not eat any but all animals that is found dead. They must not eat anything that wild animals have torn apart. The people of Israel, you will divide up the land you will receive. Many of you give me my share of it. It will be sacred area. It will be eight miles long and six and a half miles wide. The entire area will be hung. A temporary area in it will be 875 feet long and 875 feet wide. An 88 foot strip around it will be open land. In the sacred area, measure off a large strip of land. It will be eight miles long and three and a half, three and a third miles wide. The temple will be in it. There will be the most holy place of all. The large strip will be the sacred chair of land for the priests. Then there, the, there they will serve me in the temple, and they, will, and they will approach me to serve me there. Their houses will be built on that land. The holy temple will also be located there. And so the Levites will serve again in the temple. They will have an area eight miles long and three and a third miles wide. The towns they live in will be located there. Give the city an area one and two, one and two a third miles wide and eight miles long. It will be right next to the sacred area. It will belong to all the people who are the prince will have land on both sides gates of the sacred area and the city. Its border will run east and west among the land from one of the tribes. The prince will own this land in Israel, and my princess will not crush my people anymore. Instead, they will allow the people of Israel to receive their own share of land. It will be divided up based on their tribes. The Lord and King says, Princes of Israel, you've gone far enough. And you stop hurting others. <clears throat> Do not crush them. Do what is fair and right. Stop taking my people's land away from them. And this is the Lord and King. Use weights and measures that are honest and exact. Use the same standard to measure dry and liquid products. Use a six bushel measure for dry products. And use a 60 gallon measure for liquids. Every amount of money must be weighed out, keeping with the standard weights. You must offer a special gift. It must be six pounds out of every single bushel out of every six bushels of grain. Give two and a half quarts out of every sixty gallons of olive oil. As you give one sheep from every flock of two hundred sheep. Get them from the grasslands of Israel that receive plenty of water. Use them for grain offerings, burnt offerings and friendship offerings. They will be used to pay for the sin of the people, and assist the Lord and King. And all the people in the land will be required to give this special gift. They must give it to the prince of Israel. They must provide the burnt offerings, grain offerings, and drink offerings. He must, they will be for the yearly feasts, the new moon feasts, and Sabbath days. They will be for all the appointed feasts of the people of Israel. The prince will provide the sin offerings, grain offerings, the burnt offerings, and friendship offerings. They will be used to pay for the sin of the Israelites. The Lord of Kings says, Gideon will. It must not have any flaws. Use it to make the temple pure and clean. Do this on the first day of the first month. The priest must get some of the blood from the sin offering. He must put some on the doorposts of the temple. He must apply some to the four corners of the upper ledge on the, of the altar. He must put the rest on the gatepost of the inner, of the inner courtyard. Do the same thing on the seventh day of the month. Do this for those who sin without meaning to. And do this for those who sin without realizing what they are doing. So you will make the temple pure and clean. Keep the path 
so the feast on the 14th day of the first month. It will last for seven days. During that time, you must eat bread made without yeast. The prince must provide a bull as a sin offering. It will be for him and all the people of the land. For each of the seven days of the feast, he must provide seven seven bulls and seven rams. They must not have any bulls. They will be a burnt offering to me. The priests must also provide a male goat for a sin offering. So you must bring 35 pounds for each bull or ram. You must also provide four quarts of olive oil for each of them. Seven days of the feast begin on the 15th day of the seventh month. During those days, the prince must provide the same sin offerings, burnt offerings, grain offerings, and olive oil. And the morning king says, On the six working days of each week, you must keep the east gate of your, the inner courtyard of the temple shut, but open it on the Sabbath days and during the evening feast. The prince must enter the temple area through the porch of the gateway. He must stand by the gatepost. The prince must sacrifice his gift burnt offering and French offerings. He must bow down and worship at the entrance of the gateway. Then he must leave, but the gate will not be shut until evening. On Sabbath days and during New Moon Feast, the people of the land must gather together. They must gather at the entrance of the temple gateway. That is where they must worship me. The prince must bring a burnt offering to me on the Sabbath day. It will be six male lambs in a row. They must not have any flaws. He must offer 35 pounds of grain along with the ram. The grain he offers along with the ram, lambs can be as much as he wants to give. He must also offer four quarts of olive oil for every 35 pounds of grain. On the day of the new moon feast, the prince must make another offering. He must offer a young bull, six lambs, and a ram. They must not have any fools. He must offer 35 pounds of grain along with the bull or ram. The grain he offers along with the lambs can be as much as he wants to give. He must also offer four quarts of olive oil for every 35 pounds of grain. Here's how the prince must enter the temple area. He must go in through the porch of the gateway and he must leave the same way. The people of the land must worship me at the appointed feast. Those who enter through the north gate must leave through the south gate. Those who enter through the south gate must leave through the north gate. They must not eat, leave through the same gate they entered. Each one must go through, must go out the opposite gate. The prince must be among them, and he must go in when they go in, and he must leave when they leave. At the yearly feast and at the appointed feast, there will be grain offerings. The prince must offer 35 pounds of grain along with the bull or ram. The grain he offers along with the rams can be as much as he wants to give. He must also offer four quarts of olive oil for every 35 pounds of grain. He must also bring another offering to me because he chooses to. It might be a burnt offering or a friendship offering. Then he brings it. The east gate must be open for him. He will bring his offering just as he does on the Sabbath day. Then he will leave. After he has gone out, the gate must be shut. Each, every day you must provide a lamb that is a year old. You must not have any flaws. It is a burnt offering to me. You, you must provide it every morning. You must also offer, offer grain along with it every morning. Bring six pounds of grain. I also make one and a half quarts of olive oil to make the flour a little wet. So you will make give the grain offering to me. And there will be a little that will last for all time to come. And provide the lamb grain offering and oil every morning. They will be used for a regular event offering. The Lord and King says, Suppose the prince makes a gift of a share of land, and he gives it to one of his sons. Then the property will also belong to his sons after him. It will be handed down to them. But suppose he makes a gift from a share of land to one of his servants. Then the servant may keep it until the year of Jubilee. After that, it will be returned to the prince. His property may be handed down to his son, to, only to his son. It belongs to him. The prince must not take any share of the land that belongs to the people. He must not give, drive them off their property. He must give their sons their property, their share out of his own property. Then not one of my people will be separated from their property. The man brought me through the entrance at the side of the north building. That's where the priest's sacred rooms were located. He showed me a place west of the building. 
He said to me, this is where the priest must collect the grain offerings, make your offerings and silk offerings. They must also break, bake the grain offerings here. They must, then they will not have to bring the offerings into the had courtyard. Then I will keep the people from touching the offerings and becoming holy. Then the man brought me to the uh, outer courtyard. He led me around to its four corners. In each corner I saw another smaller courtyard. So in the four corners of the outer courtyard, of the outer courtyard, uh, of the outer courtyard were walled courtyards. Each one was 70 feet, 70 feet long and 53 feet wide. All of them were long, all of them were the same size. Along, around the inside of the, of the courtyard, of each of the four courtyards was a stone ledge. Places for fire were built or, or around under each ledge. The man, the man said to me, these are the kitchens. <clears throat> Those who serve at the temple must cook the people's sacrifices here. The man brought me back to the entrance of to the temple. I saw a water flowing east from under a temple gateway. The temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple. It was flowing down south of the altar. Then he brought me here through the north gate of the outer courtyard. He led me around the outside of the outer gate that faced east. The water was flowing from the south side of the east gate. Then the man went toward the east. He had a measuring line in his hand. He measured off 1,700 feet. He led me through the water that was up to my ankles. Then he measured off another 1,700 feet. He led me through the water that was up to my knees. Then he measured off another 1,700 feet. He led me through the water that was up to my waist. Then he measured another 1,700 feet, but now there was a river that I could not go across. The water had risen so high that it was deep enough to swim in. He asked me, Sir, man, do you see this? Then he led me to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw many trees. They were on both sides of the river. The man said to me, This water flows toward the eastern territory. It goes down into the Arabah Valley. Then it enters the Dead Sea. Then it, when it empties into it, the salt water there becomes fresh. Many creatures will live where the river flows. It will have many schools of fish. The water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. People will stand along the shore to fish. From En Gedi all the way to En Aglaim will be places for spreading fish nets. The Dead Sea will have many kinds of fish. They will be like the fish in the Mediterranean Sea. And none of the swamps will have fresh water in them. They will stay salty. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on the bank on both banks of the river. Their leaves will dry, not dry up. The trees will always have, have fruit on them. Every month they will bear fruit. The water from the temple will flow too. Their fruit will be used for fruit and their leaves will be used for healing. Here's what the Lord and King says. People of Israel, here are the borders, borders of the land you will divide up. You will divide up the land among the 12 tribes of Israel. Each tribe will receive a share, but the family of Joseph will have two shares. I divide the land into equal parts. Long ago, I raised my hand and made a promise. I promised to give the land to your people of Longa, so all of it will belong to you. Here are the borders of the land. From the north side, the border will start at the Mediterranean Sea. It will go by the Heflon Road, past Lebo Hammer. Then it will continue on to Zedad, Berosa, and Sibraim. Sibraim is between Damascus and Hamath. The border will reach all the way to Hazel Hattikan. It was right next to Hath Horan. The border will go from the sea to Hazar in Hazar and it will run north of Damascus and south of Hamath. This will be the northern border. On the east side the border will run between Horan and Damascus. It will continue along the Jordan River between Gilead and the land of Israel. It will reach to the Dead Sea and all the way to Tamar. It will this will be the eastern border. On the south side, the border will start at Tamil. It will reach all the way to the waters of Meribah Kadesh. Then it will run along the Wadi of Egypt. It will end at the Mediterranean Sea. And this will be the southern border. On the west side, the Mediterranean Sea will be the border. 
I will go to a point in the cross from Libraham. This will be the western border. You must divide up this land among yourselves. Do this based on the number of men in your tribes. Each of the tribes must receive a share of the land. You must also give some land to the outsiders among you and who have children. Treat them as if they had been born in Israel. Let them have some land among your tribes. Outsiders can live in the land of any tribe. Now you must give them their share and assist the Lord again. Here are the tribes. They are listed by their names. Dan will receive one share of land. He will be at the northern border of Israel. Near the border will follow the Heslon Road to Libra Hamath. Hazar and Ann will be part of the border. So there is also the northern border of Damascus next to Hamath. Dan's northern border will run from east to west. Asher will receive one share. He will border the territory of Dan from east to west. Naphtali will receive one share. He will border the territory of Asher from east to west. Manasseh will receive one share. He will border the territory of Naphtali from east to west. Ephraim will receive one share. He will border the territory of Manasseh from east to west. Reuben will receive one share. He will border the territory of Ephraim from east to, from east to west. Judah will receive one share. He will border the territory of Reuben from east to west. He must give one share as a special gift to me. He will border the territory of Judah from east to west. It will be eight miles wide. It will be as long as the border of each of the territories from the tribes. And its border will run from east to west. The temple will be in the center of that strip of land. Give that special share of land to me. It will be eight miles long and three and a third miles wide. It will be the sacred share of land for the priests. It will be eight miles long on the north side. It will be three and a third miles wide on the west side. It will be three and a third miles wide on the east side. And it will be eight miles long on the south side. My temple will be in the center of it. This share of land will be for the priests who are set apart to me. And it will come from the family line of Zadok. Uh, members of that family line serve. They serve me faithfully. They did not go astray as the Levites and other Israelites did. Their share of land will be a sacred gift to them. It will be part of the sacred share of the land. It will be very holy. Its border will run along the territory of the Levites. The Levites will receive a share. It will be next to the territory of the priest. The Levite share will be eight miles long and three and a third miles wide. They must not sell or trade any of it. It is the best part of the land. It must not be handed over. It must not be handed over to anyone else. It is set apart to me. The area that remains is one two thirds miles wide. It is eight miles long. It will not be holy. The people in Jerusalem will build can build houses there. They can use some of it as grasslands. The city will be in the center of it. Each of the four sides of the city will be one and a half miles long. Each of the four sides of the city's grasslands will be 440 feet long. What remains of the area will be three and a third miles long on the east and west sides. Its border will run along the border of the sacred chair. Its crops will supply food for the city workers. <coughs> they will farm the area. They will come from all the tribes of Israel. The entire area will be a square. Each of its four sides will be a miles long. Set the same sacred chair apart as a special gift to me. Do the same thing with the property of the city. The area that remains on both sides will belong to the priests. So his land does not include the sacred chair and the property of the city. The eastern part of the land will the eastern part of the land will Hmm. The north of his land will reach from the sacred chair all the way to the eastern border. The western part will reach from the sacred chair to the western border. And the sacred chair itself is eight miles long on its east and west sides. Both of those areas will be right next to the borders of the two tribes on the north and south sides. They will belong to the prince. The sacred chair will be in the center of them. They will, it will have the temple in it. The property of the Levites will lie in the center of the prince's share. So with the property of the city, the prince's land will lie between the borders of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. Here's the land for the rest of the tribes. Benjamin will receive one share. He will reach from the eastern border to the western border. Simeon will receive one share. He will border the territory of Benjamin from east to west. Simeon will receive one share. He will border the territory of Benjamin from east to west. Isaac will receive one share. He will border the territory of Simeon from east to west. Zebulun will receive one share. He will border the territory of Isaac from east to west. Gab will receive one share. He will border the territory of Zebulun from east to west. 
the southern border of Gad. Of Gad will run south from Tema to the waters of Merab and Kadesh. It will continue along the way to your future. It will end at the Mediterranean Sea. This is the land you must divide among the tribes of Israel, and they will be the shares they will receive. Here's a list of the gates on the sea. Start with its north side. It will be a mile and a half long. Uh, the city gates will be named after the tribes of Israel. The north side will have three gates. They will be the gates of Reuben, Judah, and Levi. The east side will be a mile and a half long. They will have three gates. They will be the gates of Joseph, Benjamin, and Dan. The south side of the south side of will be a mile and will be a mile and a half long. And a half long. It will have three gates. There will be the gates of Simeon, Isaac, Simeon, Isaac, and Zebulun. The west side will be a mile and a half long. It will have three gates. It will have three gates. There will be the gates of Gad, Asher, and Naphtali. The city will be six miles long. From that time on, its name will be The Lord is There. Proverbs 4. My sons, listen to a father's teaching. I need to hear again and say, I give good advice, so don't turn away from what I teach I too was once a young boy in my father's house, and my mother loved me deeply. Then my father told me, he said to me, Take hold of my words with all your heart, obey my commands, and you will live. Get wisdom and get understanding. Don't forget the words. Don't forget the, my words will turn away from you. Stay close to wisdom, and she will keep you safe. Love her, and she will watch over you. To stop being wise, you must first get wisdom. No matter what it costs, get understanding. Very wisdom home, and she will lift you up. Hold her close, and she will honor you. She will set a beautiful crown on your head. She will give you a glorious crown. My son, listen, accept what I say. And you will live for my years. I instruct you in the way of wisdom. I lead you along straight paths. When you walk, nothing will slay you down. When you run, you won't trip and fall. Hold on to my teaching and don't let it go. I guard it well because it is your life. Don't take the path of evil people. Don't live the way sins do. Stay away from from their path and don't travel on it. Turn away from it and go on your way. Sins can't rest until they do what you want. They can't sleep until they make someone sin. They do you just as easily as they eat food. They hurt others as easily as they drink wine. The path of those who do run is like the sun in the morning. It shines bright and bright until the full light of day. And the way of those who do what is wrong is like deep darkness. They don't know what makes them trip and fall. My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to language. Don't let them out of your sight. Keep them in your heart. <laughs> they are life to those who find them. They are health to a person's heart body. Above everything else, guard your heart. Everything you do comes from it. <clears throat> Don't speak with just words. Keep evil talk away from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Keep looking right in front of you. Keep you think carefully about the path that your feet walk on. Always choose the right ways. Don't to the right. Don't turn to the right or left. Keep your feet from the path of evil. Psalm Psalm ninety six. Sing a new song to the Lord. All you people of the earth, sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Praise him. <laughs> day after day, he tell about how he saves us. Tell the nations about his glory. Tell all people about the wonderful things he has done. The Lord is great. He is really worth your praise. People should not have, should have respect for him. He is the greatest God of all. How all the gods of the nations are like their statues. They can't do anything. But the Lord made the heaven. Glory and majesty are all around him. Strength and glory can be seen in his temple. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Praise the Lord for his glory and strength. Praise the Lord for the glory that belongs to him. Bring an offering and come into the courtyards of the temple. Measure the Lord because of his beauty and holiness. Only he who has a yes, tremble when you are with him. Say to the nations, the Lord rules. The world is firmly set in place. He can't be moved. The Lord will judge the people the people of the world fairly. Let the heavens be full of joy. Let the earth be glad. Let the ocean and everything in there. Well, let the fields and everything in them be glad. Let all the trees in the forest sing for joy. Let all creation be full of joy in front of the Lord. Because he is coming to judge the earth. He will faithfully judge the people of the Lord in keeping with what is right. Now that's done, I shall now do the Lord's prayer. Please bow your heads 
our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as you rest have forgiven our debtors. He is not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye.